First, we will cover the disassembly of our cooling fan and the basic repair points that you will encounter on the job. The first step, as with any job, is to assemble the required tools, equipment, and supplies. We will be taking this fan apart in a shop for convenience in producing this training module. However, you will often be required to perform the same job in the field. Once your tools are assembled, put on the personal protective equipment that's required by your plant. This is very important since you're working with a large and heavy piece of equipment. Before disassembly, it is very important to inspect the fan very closely. Watch for damage, excessive wear, and signs of stress. Remember, these blades turn at very high speeds, and you cannot risk using defective parts. If the blades appear to be in relatively good shape, the next step is to check the tracking pattern. This may be done by placing a pencil in position like this, at the end of the blade on the trailing edge. Then move the blade slightly, just enough to make a mark on a reference surface. The mark shows the track or plane of rotation of this particular blade. The workman then repeats the process with each of the remaining blades until he has the tracks of the blades marked, like this. This is done to determine whether or not any of the blades are bent or warped. If any of them were, the tracks would not coincide. You would then have to replace the faulty blade. However, as you can see, all of these blades seem to be tracking quite well. Here's another tip that may prove to be of help. When marking the track of each blade on the shroud, as we just did, match mark each of the marks with the blade to which it corresponds. In other words, mark the number one next to the first mark and on the blade that went with it. The next blade and its mark would be number two, etc. This could save confusion in trying to locate a problem blade. Since these blades appear to be tracking satisfactorily, we'll move on to the next step match mark each of the blades to its retention socket and the socket to its position on the hub plates. This is very important since the blades and retention sockets must be reinstalled in the same location from which they were removed. Now our workman selects the first blade to be removed and positions a support under the tip of the blade this is necessary due to the size and weight of the blade. Next, remove the cap screws which hold the retention socket to the hub plates. On this particular fan, there are four cap screws. Slide the blade and the retention socket part way out from between the hub plates until two of the bolt holes in the socket are exposed, as shown here. Then insert two of the cap screws into the holes in the socket, securing it to the shank of the blade. Once that's done, slide the blade and the retention socket the remainder of the way out of the hub. Replace the other two cap screws in the retention socket. Then place the blade carefully to one side. You would then repeat the process until all of the blades and retention sockets have been removed from the hub, like this. Our next step in the disassembly process is to remove the fan hub from the drive shaft. To do this, the workman first removes these two cap screws from these jack bolt holes in the tapered bushing. The cap screws were simply meant to fill the holes and prevent them from corroding or accumulating debris. Now he loosens these three cap screws which secure the tapered bushing to the hub. They must be backed out only about a quarter of an inch, not completely removed. Then he installs two jack bolts in the jack bolt holes of the bushing. He tightens first one bolt then the other, 
breaking the tapered bushing loose from the tapered bore of the hub. Make sure that you tighten the jack bolts alternately, loosening the bushing evenly. If you don't, you could cock the bushing to one side and damage it. After the bushing is loose, remove the two jack bolts. Then replace them with two eye bolts, like these. Attach two slings of equal length to the eye bolts and to a hoist. Then use a hoist to lift the hub assembly off the drive shaft, like this. Place the hub carefully to one side. That completes the disassembly of the cooling fan. The next step is repair and replacement of parts. However, before any repair can begin, all parts must be cleaned with special care, keeping an eye out for erosion, corrosion, or other damage. Your instructor can fill you in on the recommended cleaning method now in use at your plant. Once they have been cleaned, inspect all of the parts for wear or damage. If you have any doubt on the condition of any bolts, washers, or nuts, replace them. Don't take a chance. Recheck the blades carefully for cracks or other damage. It will be necessary to replace any blades that are flawed. Most manufacturers recommend that blades be repaired in pairs, since they are factory balanced in pairs. In other words, when cracked blade A is replaced, blade B should be replaced. However, where adequate balancing can be done, single blades may be replaced. Check with your instructor on your plant policy. Here's something else to watch for. If your fan blades are hollow, check to make sure that there is no water trapped in them. If there is water in the blade, it must be drained or the blade must be discarded. Older blades were sometimes manufactured with a drain in the end of the blade. It was called a weep hole. This could be used to drain the water from the blade. However, if your blades have no drains or weep holes and there is water trapped inside, it will be necessary to replace the blade. Water trapped inside a fan blade is usually evidence of a crack somewhere in the blade. Don't forget to inspect the blade shanks, too, for excessive wear or damage. Also check the shank fit in the corresponding retention socket to ensure smooth and even mating surfaces. All that remains now is to order required replacement parts or complete necessary repairs. We have some questions for you now on the disassembly and repair of a cooling fan. You'll find them in exercise number two of your workbook.